Okay. Okay. So, um, there's a lot of stuff going on in Chinatown right now. All right. Um, is there a motion about the minutes? I make yes. a motion. Okay. Is, I second. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, all right. Um, what we needed to do was develop a resolution to request city agencies, including DCLA, DOT, the uh, Department of Sanitation and Parks to increase funding opportunities in the discussion of the current budget for artists and arts organizations. So, um, at any rate, any suggestions from that, Olivia? Crystal? Suggestions? What kind of suggestions are you talking about? What sort of suggestions are you talking about? We need a draft mean? resolution because what we were looking for are ways to expand funding opportunities for artists and arts organizations through city agencies um, that are included in the budget. Um, unfortunately, mm -hmm. the Department of Cultural Affairs is not in uh, the budget negotiations, but uh, DOT, Department of Sanitation and Parks are. So, well, of course, parks, it would be very valuable. We, we, you know, <clears throat> our whole summer, uh, the summer were, were parks, and of course we couldn't perform outside. We, <clears throat> I saw in the minutes uh, something about looking for <clears throat> uh, outside performances. I certainly would like to push in, in that direction. But at any rate, we made a wonderful... Um, outreach to all the parks we would have performed in and um, we actually received a very tiny but very gratefully accepted donation from one of the parks uh -huh. and um, <clears throat> and we were on a number of the parks websites this summer our performance I mean when our performance was live uh, during the whole summer every Saturday and Sunday at 2 uh, okay. online. But uh, we certainly had a relationship to the parks. <clears throat> and then yeah. to NYCHA. Um, okay, also because... so that's basically the next topic. The support oh, okay, topic. sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, Olympia, your comments on a resolution? Yes. So, I mean, I think what we had discussed is I just copy-pasted in the chat uh, the bullet point that we originally had in the district needs that said the city should create WPA style programs to employ artists and cultural workers for the next three to five years. Uh, they, uh, that uh, they were uh, like, I don't know why it's, it's weird written, impacted arts and cultural industries rebounds as the impacted arts and cultural industries rebounds. So I think, I mean, have you drafted any reso that you want to review, or do you want us to write a reso from scratch here on this meeting? I thought we could write it from scratch at this meeting because I wanted you all to have input into it. Yeah. So, I mean, I think we could, we could expand on this sentence that we originally had in the district needs and then this in the discussions with uh, um, the chair of the Economic Development Committee and the uh, CB3 manager they, you know, it became apparent that it made more sense for this to be a separate resolution than to have it in the district needs. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, what is interesting um, is that now there is a little bit of public, uh, uh, you know, traction because there was recently an article with quotes from uh, Senator Jessica Ramos, who is the chair of the Labor Committee, actually uh, asking for a new New Deal herself. So I think the resolution should be saying that, um, you know, uh, because uh, the art and uh, are you gonna draft it like a Clint? Can we ask you to be our secretary, or you're working on something else? <laughs> well, I'm drafting it in the minutes. No oh, more. you're drafting it. Okay, good. Yeah. No, so I'm, basically, I'm, 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 you know, Clint, if you'd like to have input into this, please feel free. <laughs> we'll join in if I. Okay. So well, I think I think that the Reza could say that you know because of the drastic impact that the arts and cultural sector had received and especially the performing arts sector that, uh, you know, the, it was the first 
to close and the last one that will reopen. Uh, we feel that it is very important that we preserve and support this workforce uh, during the shutdown and we recommend that the, the city states prioritize any relief funds that they will have to create, um, you know, temporary employment programs like, you know, the ones in the past by, you know, the new DLWPA. Um, and we are open, like we recommend, uh, you know, the, the agencies that you had put in the agenda to look into ways in which, you know, and I would add in those agencies DOE because DOE could definitely benefit from, you know, uh, art teachers and extra support for the kids right now as they do remote learning. Um, okay, wherefore the arts and culture sector, sector, sector has experienced extensive damage from the pause program with COVID-19 Are you looking I mean, for ways for us to allied with other city agencies besides cultural affairs? Is that what you're looking for now? What we're or looking just for is because the, the topic, that, the way that has begun is that because Carlina's discretionary funds were cut so badly. Um, oh, were they? Speaker, well, yeah, she was granted $225,000 and discretionary funds for this year, this right. coming year, um, right. as compared to 11 million from last year. A little oh little my God. Last year. And all of the council people who voted against the budget were penalized uh, by the speaker. So at any rate, what that means is, is that the smaller arts organizations that normally receive funding through discretionary funds will be extremely hard hit because there is a very small pot to go through many different nonprofits in this CBA. And based on that, what are you looking for? Well, what we were looking for were other ways that funding could be increased for arts organizations. Yeah, that's what I mean. Right. You're looking and for other ways. We were looking for other ways that city funding could uh, a stream, a funding stream could be created. Could be to created. Right. Fund artists and arts organizations. Yeah. Both DOT and the uh, Department of Sanitation have programs in place. Parks Department, um, I don't know that they include it in their budget, but they do have a gallery and they do accept applications for artwork to be, um, you know, displayed in public parks. Uh, is there any way that they could also include like a stipend or something to help the artists to do that? Um, the other issue has to do with the fact that when artists apply to uh, DOT, and I'm not sure about the Department of Sanitation, they're required to provide um, a certificate from an engineer about the safety of their project and stuff, which is basically in order to get a letter like that, it's usually like about at least 500 to $800. So at any rate, we're looking for ways that are, are to express ways that maybe perhaps these agencies could assist arts organizations, artists, improving the funding stream. <clears throat> and be represented when they go to the budget hearings. The only thing I can ever think of is after school cultural arts. Yeah, well, you know, that was. But I don't know that that has to do with DOS or. Um, you know. I, that usually, what, is through DYCD? That would be the education so the, department. Well, DYCD is the one that gets the funding for the after school programs, is my understanding. Who gets the funding? The Department of Youth and. Uh, what? Do you oh, see? yeah, you're right. Well, that would be, I think that could work. The after school. <clears throat> yeah, Theater for the New City has been funded that way right. in the past. But it was for, we, we served the shelters. We served a number of city shelters. Um, that's very hard work. Uh, we did it. We, that's it because they have to, sometimes the only good meal they get 
during the day they would get at at your place. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to serve them dinner, and then after they eat, they have cultural activities. But you know, it uh, requires a certain kind of an artist because the kids in the shelters have real problems, major, major problems. And, you know, you have to be able to deal with it. Um, but that is a funding stream. We, 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 there was a really great program that the city had for a number of years, um, including even the public theater had an after-school cultural arts program. Um, for the shelters, you know, you one shelter, and they they bus the ki kids to you, and <clears throat> it's just you know you uh, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. Uh, <laughs> it really takes a toll. So you have to be a certain kind of person to want to do that, to be able to do it. Anyway, right. it's a funding stream, definite. Yeah, so DYCD should be included in that. But yeah. Children's services, children's youth, youth services. Youth, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Carolyn, do you want to read the rezo as, as far as you have it, or do you want to share your screen? Because I know we need to write two rezos, right? Right, I know. I'm not sure how to share the screen. I'm not thought it up. So, so I think Clint can part. basically make you a co-host and then you just have beneath uh, at the top of the Zoom, it needs to, it has a, a small green square with an arrow and if you click on it, you can share your screen. Okay. All right. Um, Clint, you are muted. All right. No, I see the share screen. It's yes. at the bottom of my screen, not the top. Okay. Okay. So um, you should be able to share now, Carolyn. Okay, fine. Um, so, all right, let's see how I can do this. All right, uh, that's nice. Uh, it says multiple, okay. One participant can share at a time. Do I click advanced sharing options or what? Just, uh, if you click, it should bring up a few different options. And if it's in Word, it should bring up the Word program. You can click on that and it should share your Word document. Okay. Uh, What's coming up when I click on it is one participant can share at a time. Uh, let's try advanced sharing options. <sighs> okay. If this is uh, not working, you can just read the document and yeah, we're going to edit it verbally. Yeah, okay. So far, what I've written is wherefore the arts and culture sector has experienced extensive damage from the pause program enacted by New York State. Uh, approximately 70% of the arts community has had their funding cut, according to Senator Jose Serrano. The performing arts industry has had uh, the most extensive cuts and will not be able to open, okay, until what, is the date been changed from January or what? What do you mean, Carolyn? You My mean theaters? Theaters, performing arts. Theater, Broadway is not opening until June. Okay. And Have, as far as anything else goes, they don't care. <laughs> they don't, we're not even on the radar. They don't discuss off, off, or even off. They only talk about Broadway, and Broadway is not opening until June. Okay. So okay. I think I'm, I'm posting in the chat the paragraph that we had originally in the district needs. And it was saying many gig economy artists and cultural producers had no income since, since March and weren't able to access unemployment benefits for months. While the prospects of new commissions and projects are in existence since theaters, venues, and live performance initiatives are indefinitely shattered. We don't know when they will reopen. So right now there is this indefinite thing. Uh, so the economic hit that the arts and cultural sector is receiving will last for three to five years depending on sector specificities. However, artists and cultural workers are the creative capital of New York and are integral to the creative industry capital that fueled New York's tourism and export economy for years. So I think this sentence that we had written for the needs 
and I'm not mm -hmm. sure it's still there, but it's definitely the perfect intro for us to call for funding to support this workforce while they are shattered, while they, you know, they cannot perform and, and uh, but at the meanwhile, uh, you know, the community is definitely in desperate need of cultural programming. Yeah, I think we need to... Well, but if you can't perform, yeah. how are you going to give them cultural programming? I mean, there are after school and outdoors and online. Oh, so, uh, yeah, if okay. You, if, if you would get money, you would be able to produce some work in that way. Yes, that's true. We are already doing it without money, and we're in terrible trouble because of it, money-wise. Yeah. That is absolutely true. Online and after school and outdoors, all those three things could be done now within the guidelines, within, within the health guidelines. Yeah, and they all require money. Yeah, and so we want them to make it a priority. If there is any federal relief funds, we want to mm -hmm. make sure that they use some of them for this kind of uh, programming. Yes. Oh, I think that's I think that's laudable. Okay. Um, yeah. No, I was impressed. I was in a Zoom meeting um, where Serrano was on, and he basically said that seventy percent of the industry had been artists and arts organizations had lost significant funding. Uh, so that's on the state level. That. Uh, but at any rate. Um, the other thing that came up at the Economic Development Committee meeting is um, the, their consensus of opinion was, is that we cannot use the word export economy. Um, so I haven't received the final Why draft not? Because they said that the term was not um, correct um, to describe what it is. So you know what, that we need to have this conversation because it was so inappropriate in the first place that they put arts and culture and their economic development and given the fact that these people are speaking about things that they obviously don't understand, if New York is not exporting culture in the whole world with our artists, our music, our theaters, I don't know who is, you know, so I mean, when they are giving us inaccurate and ignorant feedback, this needs to be, you know, discussed. We cannot accept their edits when they are not obviously informed about what we're talking. Um, right. There was an extensive discussion about it. <laughs> and uh, so at any rate, it was redrafted. Uh, that did it include something about the economy, but since I have not received the edited draft yeah. no they are not sorry let's do we uh, for a second here let's be like serious and democratic this is not acceptable they cannot edit the work of another committee uh, right? do you understand that like this is not okay, acceptable not i don't understand it olympia it's a matter of what i have been told by the district office is the way that we will conduct business Okay, and that's what they have been doing. <laughs> so but this is not okay. I mean, this doesn't even comply for the, with the open uh, discussion law. Like, if anybody wants to amend an, a, a, a resolution that has been drafted in a public uh, meeting, they're going to have their opportunity to amend it either in the meeting at economic development or at the full board meeting. They cannot take it home and edit it. And then the committee that is doing the rest doesn't know what we are resolutioning on <laughs> you know that's not yeah. acceptable sorry i'm i i really you know i'm not okay with that <laughs> okay no i think you perfectly justified in expressing your opinion you know and you have a right to your opinion in terms of how um the district office uh will end. i mean sorry this is not my opinion uh, and you know this is this is the law right this is the open meeting law and that's something that we would have to take up with them. Okay. So the district yes. office told you that, that you had to rewrite your resolution? Is that what you're no, saying? The, 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 
what happened was the district needs statement um, when it was anything that we draft in this committee has to be presented to the economic development committee for their approval before it will ever make it to right us. yeah okay. okay so because so they didn't they, approve supervising committee. no they did not approve uh, the district needs in the way that it was written the bulk of it is is intact we were able to keep charters included uh, thanks to Andrew. what did they dis what did they not like uh, a number of different things but unfortunately I don't have the draft the final draft I see changed because it was only on the zoom and I can't print that. I don't have a copy of it. It will be approved at the executive committee. So I would suggest uh, that if you have concerns about that, that we should all sign in to the executive committee. When is it, Clint, next Thursday? Next Thursday, yeah. Yeah. And Are you sit in the executive now, Clint, or not anymore? No. Yeah. A yeah. pity. <laughs> Yes, yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay, so you know, well, we're a subcommittee, so I suppose we are, whatever we want has to be approved by the committee. That's why. Yeah, because they're going to have to give it to the board. Right. That's yeah, the but they, they need to approve it in a public space, like where we can have input. Uh, they cannot just, ha, ha, somebody from that committee or from the office cannot take this document do whatever changes they want and then just present it at the full board as if it was our resolution because it's not. Okay. okay, I think what you're referring to is what happened in land use. Okay, there was a public meeting for the Economic Development Committee. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it, um, unfortunately, you weren't able to be there. Yes, okay. but what I'm talking about is today, we are having this meeting in which we're supposed to do two resolutions, right? right. And and they are around similar topics with our district needs. Right, but the thing so, about it and is first and foremost, the resolutions that we draft tonight, okay, that will be forwarded to the Economic Development Committee will be on their agenda in November. They won't be- Yeah, voted. I know that. Mm -hmm. But what I'm, I'm also <laughs> saying- Is that we would have to go to the Economic Development Committee and comment at that point in time. If we have, a, you know, they will come make their comments as to what they think of our resolutions. Okay. And then we can comment about what we think of their edits. And that is the process at this point in time. So, so in I other mean, words, I their, think... their edits have not gone through. They're okay. going to come up in a right. public meeting. Right. The, the ed okay. the draft tonight will be forwarded to the office to Ed Jim and it will go to Anisha and to Susan and to Jim okay and they will review it and then it will appear on the Economic Development Committee agenda we hope in November and then we can attend that meeting and we will hear the their committee's comments on the resolutions and the edits that they so, yes, sorry, Caroline, I didn't talk about that. I know the process. I was just talking about the resolution we did on similar issues last month, and I'm completely okay with the fact that it was discussed at economic development, but since this, this subcommittee is reconvening today, uh, I think it is probably within our rights to know what were those suggestions and what is the new draft of that reso, uh, and, and it's not. Uh, Right. Okay. There was no resolution that was reviewed in economic development. It was only the district needs. Yes, I mean, I called it RESO, but it's basically, it, it, it's a document, let's call it, the district needs right. document. Right, I, I realize, yeah, the district needs was reviewed and edited, okay? It's the, by who? Uh, by the Economic Development Committee, okay? Uh, and uh, there was a link. And they said what they liked and what they didn't like. Exactly. And so, and we don't know what that is. Well, the problem is, is that the draft will be submitted to the Economic okay. Development Committee next Thursday. And what I'm suggesting is that we tune in to the, I mean, to the Executive Committee next Thursday, and they will review the draft and comment on it. 
But I mean, they've already told you what they don't no, like, right? They're two separate things. There is the Economic Development Committee drafted, uh, you know, the changes that they wanted, okay? That draft will be submitted to the Executive Committee on Thursday to approve. So can you tell us what those changes are? I don't have a copy of it in front of me to be explicit about what all the changes were. But one of the comments was is that really set them off was the word export economy. Um, and so at any rate, it was redrafted uh, to not have- I don't even know what export economy means. Because export economy means that New York is like one of the world centers for the arts and we export a great deal of our arts to other countries around the world and that's oh export the, you know, yeah export, export culture right that we export culture yeah we, i could see where they wouldn't like, like that we export music jesus we export fashion we export you know you name it we've exported it in the arts world yeah i know it sounds like you're selling it <laughs> it's it sold I mean, it, it, the ideas are sold and they're marketed across the country. I mean, it, it's hysterical because I think one of the things that um, the CIA used abstract art <laughs> as a way to- uh, Well, that's probably why they didn't like it because it had to be something like the CIA. Uh, no. It certainly it was, wasn't Joe Schlow down, down no, the block. This was, this was in like the, the late 40s, 50s and stuff that uh, that, that went around. Um, but at any rate, yeah, um, it is like um, the artist that did the Goldman Sachs mural um, is located here in the U.S. where she fabricated her work was in Germany. Okay, so, you know, the money for creating that artwork fed into the German economy. That it was several million dollars that uh, that the artist received to create it. But it, it is we do export a lot of art, and we utilize other countries as. Uh, okay, well, I've never exported any art, so. Yeah, you have. You've gone to Colombia, those different things. Yeah, but I didn't ever exported any art. I I didn't get well, paid any money for going to Colombia. You didn't get paid any money, but you did export art and ideas to other countries. You've been to Italy. You've done performances there. Yeah, I just, uh, I, I don't like the word myself. Okay, it's very, but at any rate, whatever. Very crass. Uh, okay, um, whatever. Okay, it's just, that was one of the comments I know that they went back and forth and they, uh, you know, as all things considered, it came out better than I thought it was going to. And okay, on. well, that sounds good. But we won't have access to that draft until next Thursday when it's presented to economic, uh, to the executive committee. That I was well, who made the draft? They, in other words, they took what, what we wrote and they rewrote it a bit. Yes, that, that's and it. They, and then they're going to present that. They're presenting that at the executive without committee. telling us what they did. They, you know, I saw it online when it was being created. What I don't have is a written copy of it to share with you. Why not? Because they won't yeah. give it to you. Huh? They haven't sent it to me. That's why. Uh, well, that's kind of crummy. That whole that that's kind of crazy. Well, but anyway. you know, that's the way it is. Right now, we don't have a copy of it. It will be available on Thursday at the <laughs> executive committee we can tune in then, okay? Wow. And um, it will also be at the full board. It will be printed in the, um, I'm assuming in the uh, sheets. So I, I have a motion. I think that uh, we, we are done with the first resolution. You know, we threw down the why and the what. And I think we could move on and do a resolution in support of the outdoor dining legislation, sorry, outdoor performance legislation by Jimmy Van Bramer and the one related with Laurie Kumbo. Um, because, I mean, they're very straightforward and I, you know, we all have probably Zoom fatigue by this point. So I would recommend trying to finish the meeting <laughs> the earliest possible. <laughs> right, sure. 
<laughs> dinner is nice. Well, rel uh, relative to that outdoor thing, I, I do want to say something, but I okay. don't know if it's can I if just, you're talking about it yet. Right. We're not talking about it quite yet. Uh, okay. Therefore, what are we asking? Okay. We're therefore asking that uh, when the federal relief funds arrive or whenever funds the city has, you know, uh, yeah, when, whenever the city receives relief funds, we want them to prioritize such programs that employ artists and, you know, support uh, the arts and cultural sector at large during this horrible, you know, shutdown that they're experiencing. Okay, therefore, that when federal relief funds um, are received... Arrive at the city and state? Because no, both the city no. and state could, could finance this. But, you know, you can't ask for money unless we're doing something. So don't you think we need to talk about online and, you know, a virtual performance and that they should um, support that end because we are not allowed to open therefore we're not open therefore we are not performing in person so what are we doing that they could fund yeah it's, so it's i mean we can we can add yeah so we can add those things so, so that you know i mean first of all the artist could still produce work right they may not be able to present it yet but they could get funding to create a new write a new theater piece or write new music or what, you know, do whatever they, they do. Um, so I think partially it could be, you know, directly to, to, to artists and then for programming, it could be for programming that conforms with health mandates. So programming that can happen outdoors, online, or in a safe so social distance way, because there are also some spaces that could even be safe indoors because they're huge. So as long as they have seating that is, you know, well distanced and there is aeration in place. Yeah, but indoor... then, yes, but one of the things that's required is going to be that new filter system. Like yeah. we can definitely, but that, that filter system we can't afford. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so you could get maybe, a grant for a system like that, a place like well, you if could we get could. a grant for that. Yeah, that's right. That would be something that they could uh, fund, finance. Yeah, yeah, finance. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I think, but I think we should be a little specific and talk about online, outdoor, or uh, social distancing abilities that they should fund those things that we can do them. Not that we are out of work, give us money. You know what I mean? See what I mean? Yeah, we, we, we can, that we can add work. that. Yeah. Okay. I think we, should, I think we need to or they're not going to listen. Well, you know, we keep trying. That, um, okay, so basically I'll, um, we will speak and fine tune the resolution on that and support okay on to item three support for new york city proposed legislation to facilitate outdoor permitting yeah i uh, about are we talking about that now yeah let's move on okay can i just tell you a, a fact we applied for a, a permit to perform in the street. Um, we knew we weren't going to get it for August 1st, which is when we usually perform in the right. street, and all the rest are parked. So we also asked for September 5th, and we didn't get that either. And the reason they gave was we are giving permits for outdoor dining and performances in the street are under block parties there is no there is no permit for outdoor performances you have to apply under block party and yeah. block party is in conflict with outdoor dining so we cannot give you a permit oh, not that anything you do would be wrong 
but we cannot give a permit for outdoor dining and at the same time one for block party. So I just okay. want you to know so, that's what uh, went on. Yeah. I am familiar with this issue. It has to do with Executive Order 148 by Mayor de Blasio that makes illegal any kind of sound, I mean, you would have amplified sound, right? Uh, uh, yeah, but event. they didn't even get to that. But yes, that's yes. another issue. Yes. But so there is this emergency Executive Order 148 that uh, has basically made impossible performance, outdoor performance. And uh, I think this Jimmy Van Bramer bill is trying to create something similar with outdoor dining for outdoor performance, basically streamlining the permitting. But it is very important that in this resolution, we also refer to the fact that we want the mayor to you know, revise executive order 148 and allow for you know, amplified sound when it meets certain criteria, because right now it's just illegal. And so that means we any certainly performance. Want, we yeah. want that also, but we also do not want to run into conflict with outdoor dining. We want somehow or other to be able to apply for a permit. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think there is a conflict. What happened at that time is there that is. they prioritized about that. Yeah. Well, no, they didn't, pri they didn't prioritize it. They told us in no uncertain terms that they are conflicting permits and that they cannot give a permit for two different things at the same time. Now, the outdoor dining has gone into the gutter. I don't know if you know that, but they are taking up parking lanes now. They're not just on the sidewalk. They are yeah. actually in the gutter. In They're the, in the in street. The, oh, yeah. On, but okay. Uh, focus and on. not only that, but they are beginning to have single performers performing. But that's illegal, unfortunately. Well, but that they're control. doing it. Yeah. I know they are. I mean, you know, yeah. it. Humanly speaking, it's nice to hear performances. There was a group performing on the corner of Avenue B and. Uh, Eleven. Is, is it the like five piece marching band that's kind of been going around? Um, I don't th I think it was the marching band. Um, okay. It was an interesting ensemble and it was nice. You know, it's like Tafania has had um, a duet, uh, a duo perform. And it's yeah, well, I don't think the, uh, I don't like think the, the on I don't think the restaurants would be against it, by the way. I don't think restaurants they, are against it. Depending, but we've on got a permit problem, so I'm just telling you they wouldn't. No, I realize that was that, that will be incorporated into the resolution that needs to be addressed. Okay, so Olympia, yeah. you quoted the legislation that it causes. Yes, I had emailed already the legislation back in the day. So let me just. No, no, I have it. that. Ah, okay. It's the legislation that you're talking about that limits the. Are that oh, so the executive mm -hmm. order, I can send it to you in the chat. This is the emergency executive order 148 by the mayor. And this is uh, the one that makes amplified sound illegal. And so we want to make sure that, you know, because if, if the legislation by Jim Van Bramer passes, but this executive order is still active, the legislation is basically useless. Because this supersedes you're, you're that. right. You're right. Uh, amplified sound is very important. Yeah. I guess that Jimmy Van Bramer is worried about the High Line, you know, that may be having performances there. Usually he's more worried about Queens. <laughs> oh, yeah, Queens. Okay. Oh, who's the guy who's worried about the High Line? Probably the Corey, speaker. Corey Johnson. Yeah. Corey Johnson. Yeah. Red anyway, I, I, yeah, and also in the parks, we, we, we were not given permits. And they said, uh, the parks department said to us now, you can apply, but there's no guarantee that you will get anything. That was the last thing they said to us. So we definitely want to be able to perform in the parks. 
there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to. You know, people have been performing in the park. Yeah, I know, but illegally. Right. They didn't uh, get permits. Uh, and several... we have, you know, our company, we have a company of 50 and a stage. You know, right. you can't fool around like that with that right. kind of a company. No, I know. You have to have permits. Yeah. Okay. And I'm sure that more, more uh, Broadway-type uh, shows will probably go into the parks if they allow allow that, you know. So we might be able to get some help from that sector in in pushing this. Anyway. Okay. So do you want to read what you have so far? Okay, whereas, uh, wherefore, the New York City Council member Jimmy Van Bramer has proposed legislation uh, intro 2068-2020 to facilitate outdoor performing arts events and performances, but that Executive Order 148 by Mira de Blasio forbidding amplified uh, sound creates a conflict. So no, no. So I think what we want to say is that we support one thing and the other one, we urge them to amend it so that it does allow for outdoor performance to take place. So what I would say is more like, uh, um, so, you know, that um, we feel that uh, it was a great loss to New York City as a whole, the fact that this summer, uh, the city only focused on outdoor dining and didn't focus uh, on, on getting outdoor performance running. We want to make sure that they, you know, correct this course by passing yeah. immediately the legislation of Jimmy Van Bramer that creates, you know, a streamlined uh, permitting process for outdoor performance similar to outdoor dining. And we we yeah. also urge the city to, you know, um, amend uh, the emergency executive order 148 by the mayor so that amplified sound uh, when it's needed for outdoor performance indeed is legal, you know, it's, it's feasible. Right, and, and you know, if they want to, uh, if they want to uh, keep the decibels at a certain point, we, I mean, we might say if they want to you know, uh, regiment the amount of sound. This you is know, already I regimented, I think. So there is already the guidelines for uh, for um, amplified sound. Yeah, yeah. Public yeah. space are already yeah, regimented. Yeah, there is. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, okay. it's already. So we don't All need right. to have so special provision okay. for that. The All right. City Council member, uh, Jimmy Van Bramers, uh, has proposed legislation that 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 the performing arts for art events and performances it has been a great loss to the city as a whole that the focus has only been on outdoor dining we urge the um city to amend executive order 148 by mayor de blasio forbidding amplified sound so that outdoor performances you want to throw in something about the emotional health of the city because that's beginning to emerge, that there is a real um, problem with people's uh, psyches now because of this. And that the cultural life is, is the basis of the emotional life, uh, the emotional health of, of our citizens. I, I think that might say something. Yeah, I agree. We should write that, you know, there is a, you know, investing on this makes sense in many ways, F financially for the sector, because you, you have more people, you know, employed, oh, but that also, uh, but also emotionally, both for those people who have been long term unemployed, and they have no you know, hope for the future right now. And then also for the community, for the community society as a whole that still craves for, you know, local accessible, uh, you know, uh, performance, physical, not yeah, just and, visual, you know. Yeah, 
I think that's good. I I think that the the impact of the loss of accessibility to the performing arts has uh, has had had a detrimental effect on uh, the emotional life of our citizens. Okay. It has. On the um, what mental? It's a detrimental uh, effect. Do you want to? On what? It, it, are we saying on the emotional having... health of our citizens? Okay, on the emotional health. Okay, on the emotional health of our community as a whole, we urge the city to amend Executive Order 148 by Mayor de Blasio forbidding amplified sounds so that outdoor performances could be accommodated and made accessible to the general public. Does that work for you guys? Works for me. Okay. And we are, and you're also talking about the economic health. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to get rid of that. Okay, how would that impact on the economic health? I mean, people would be able to go back to work, you know, artists and, and arts organizations could be, you know, ticketing people for the events, etc. And, and, all, and all, of the, uh, comp all of the businesses that depend on the theater would also improve because, uh, Theaters have to buy materials to make sets. They have to buy materials to make costumes. The the actors go out to eat between rehearsals. You know, uh, I mean, the there's a tangential effect on the economic health. I mean, how you obviously see it, right? If we if we if we create a program that uh, you know invest money in arts and culture, the there is going to be you know more more artists that right now have no income whatsoever, and they rely maybe in unemployment. But you know what has happened with the enhanced benefits that have stopped since July. We don't know if they're going to get any additional. It's it's going to be very important that these people can start having income again, and the whole economy, of course, then they use that income to pay for, you know, food and rent and other things they need to buy. So it really it it reactivates the economy as a whole. But I don't think we need to to explain this in the radio. It's it's self-explanatory, I think. So we can just say, the yeah, economic life. But okay. Also, you know, we spend almost a thousand dollars a week on a truck, truck, to, a truck and a van for oh. for uh, for performing in the parks because we have to move the set, the costumes, the actors, the crew. I mean, you know, there are tangential companies that have actually gone out of business. because theaters have gone out of business. So 
I think we could say. Therefore, clause. Sorry? We don't have to mention them, you know, all. We need a therefore. Okay, because we're, for, we're saying we're starting out with the opening sentence, we, uh, wherefore we support New York City Council members, Jimmy Van Braver. Therefore, we ask this, what, the City Council or the City to... So, uh, yeah, the City Council to pass this legislation. Okay, that would improve the overall economy of the uh, city. Or I mean, I don't think, I think you don't need to ex explain why. Therefore, we just ask them to pass this legislation. We're explaining the whereas why this legislation is important. The overall economy, period. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to say why. Okay, it's just that would improve the overall economy of the CD3 area. Okay, yeah. or that would benefit mm. instead of improve. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so. Uh, we're agreement on that. And um, is there a motion to approve this resolution? I so move. Okay, all in favor. I second. Yeah. Okay. All so right. I... I'll send you what I've drafted. Okay, and then we can clean it up. Okay. Yeah. And all for right. the minutes, I think, Caroline, the other committees, they ask. Uh, you know, the, the three people who join us outside the committee to write their names in the chat this way we can right, have yeah. it. That's true. We do. Yeah, I was going to remind them to all, all visitors that aren't part of the committee to go ahead and just list your name in the chat and any organization or group you're affiliated with. Well, wait, I, you've lost me. I, what do you want us to do? Okay, not the committee members don't have to, but the people who have attended the meeting, Gingy, Susan, Wendy, if you could sign in on the chat, that would be really helpful. Okay. Um, so I move to adjourn, right? Right. Well, let's see if we can get Genji and Wendy to sign in on the chat. So I just signed it, Genji, because as I told you, I know him well. <laughs> okay. And Wendy, I don't know you if you tell us what's uh, your last name, Wendy your organization. Is a subcommittee member. Oh, okay. So then you should just put her in the present. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. I was running late today. <laughs> yeah, and Tariq wasn't able to join us, apparently. Um, Are these other members of the committee? Yes. So, Wendy, yes. since you joined us, I don't know if, um, if, you, if you had any questions or anything you wanted. Um, no, um, I joined in okay. pretty late, but I did get the gist of what's going on. Everything sounded really good. <laughs> Okay. All right. So, um, is there a motion to adjourn? Okay. I'll move. I yes. <laughs> all in favor. Okay. All great. I, thank you all. And all right. in touch. And do we know when the next meeting is? No. No, we won't know that until no. after exec. Okay. Um, so at any rate, I hope, um, you know, you know, you can sign in as a public uh, person on the exec committee next Thursday. I would suggest that you do that uh, in order to be informed prior to the full board meeting. So thank you again. And I'll see you guys around. Clint, thank you so much for hosting. Sure. No problem. And 
I think Jim will probably send you the, you know, there wasn't really much in the chat, but any transcript Jim usually sends the next day. So. Okay. All right. If not, let me know and I can download it and send it to you as well. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate your okay. help. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Good night.